In this video, we are going to be doing swatch cards and this is a really simple, easy exercise and I would highly recommend doing this once you move into professional grade paints. What you'll need will be your paints, whether they're tubes or pans. Uh, you'll need watercolor paper. I recommend using the paper you use the most often and it's high quality. You'll also need a ruler, something like an X-Acto knife to cut the paper, a pen that is waterproof. I have a Sharpie with black ink. Two flat brushes, I am using these. One is watercolor, one is acrylic because uh, for the lifting test, I wanna use a bit stiffer of a brush. And then of course, paper towels, water, and something to mix up your paints in. I'll also be punching holes on the tops of each of my cards. So I have a little hole punch here, this is optional. You could also choose to use a card catalog with the clear protective sheets that you can also put into a binder. There's lots of ways to store this and totally up to you. All right, so I'm gonna be using my cutting mat. It's already got pre-marked lines, so it makes the measuring a bit easier. No problem if you don't have one, you can use your ruler and use pencil lines to mark out your dimensions. Because this paper is nine by 12, I'm making my cards two by three, roughly. For some brands of paper, there is a front side and a back side, so you'll want to keep track of which end is which and keep them all facing the same direction. All right, and then to save time, I'm stacking my papers and doing the second cut all at once. All right, so stacking these, I see there's a few that are a little bit uneven, so I'll just cut the excess and trim that off. And since I have my hole punch ready to go, I will go ahead and do that too to each of these cards. That way I can just finish up painting and put them straight onto my key ring. Okay, so I have a nice little set ready to go and I can use these for any future paints that I buy as well. But for today, we'll be doing 12 paints in the Daniel Smith line. So although I use round brushes most often, I'll be using a flat brush for this exercise. I want to make even washes and this shape is a little bit easier to work with. All right, so ceramic dishes are really easy to clean up. You can just use a little wet paper towel and I'm wiping down where I had done earlier mixes. And this will help me have clean, pure colors for each of our swatch cards. All right, so starting with labeling each of these cards, I'll put the brand name. So in this case, DS is short for Daniel Smith and then put the color name. You can also write in each of the pigments these are listed usually on the back of the tubes or somewhere on the label. If you have a high professional quality paint, you can find that information. And you can also go online and look that up as well. I find it easier to go through and label each of these cards first. That way I'm not mixing up colors and I know exactly what I'm doing right when I'm painting that specific color. Okay, and I'm also going to be doing a little wet on wet test, which is going to be along the bottom of each of these cards. So I'm leaving about a half inch right there. You can measure this out with a ruler. I'm just going to freehand it for now. And the last thing to prep our cards is to put in a black line with that thicker marker. This ink will show us the opaqueness test. So if your paint is going to cover this up, that would be opaque. If it's totally transparent, you'll see that line very clearly. 
All right, so you can keep a little towel or rag underneath while you work so that it's a little bit cleaner and your table is a little bit protected. I'm going in and putting in the strongest variation of that color first and then rinsing my brush. And then pulling down that transparency with lighter and lighter color. So it's mostly just water towards the bottom and then a clean water stripe at the very bottom for that wet on wet technique and dropping in color onto that wet spot. And as it dries, you'll be able to see how that paint disperses and some paints can behave a little bit differently. So this is a good test to do. Okay, so go through and do each of your colors. You'll want to keep track of where they are on your palette. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I'm working. I also have a free printable guide and template. Feel free to grab that in the link below. The first page will have a little reference cheat sheet for you and the second one is a template you can print off on your watercolor paper and use that for your personal use. Okay, so once you're done, you let these dry. This is the first layer. And as you can see, especially as it dries, you can see where some of this paint is granulating and some is smooth. Daniel Smith is known for granulating paints, which is actually something I really love. Some people don't like it. It's something I personally really like to see in paint. And you can also see that wet on wet technique along the bottom where that paint dispersed in the wet water. It's not a perfect science, but it will give you a good idea of how your paint will behave. All right, so once it's all dry, we're going to do a glaze over each of these cards. So I'm putting in one stripe along the right-hand side to show what it would look like layering these paints. And the more translucent ones will be easier to see. The more opaque ones should stay relatively even. This is a good test to do as well. Okay, so all our cards have dried and you can see that glaze right on top. Some are a little bit more opaque and some transparent. This is always fun to see because when paints are wet, they look very different than when they dry sometimes. All right, so I have an acrylic brush. These bristles are a little bit stiffer. It's good for the lifting test. So I'm going to be wetting that brush a little bit and then trying to remove some of the paint and then using a paper towel to dab up any of that color. 
each of these paints will be a little bit different. If they're staining, they're going to be a lot harder to lift up that color. And if not, then you'll see that it will be pretty easy to erase that color. It's a good way to know that if you make a mistake, you can always remove some paint. You may also want to keep that rag or paper towel underneath because some of that paint will rub off onto your tabletop. Okay, so let's have a look. You can see that the paint has come off pretty clean on some of these and some of them still show a little bit of that staining on the background. This is good to know if you are going to be using certain paints and if you want it to be more flexible and removable. And for the very last step, you'll want some way to store these. So as I said earlier, you could use those card holder sleeves and put them in a binder. You could use string and tie them all together and hang them in your studio. I happen to have this key ring, so I'll be using that and just putting them on this near where I paint so it's easily accessible. And there you go, a very fun and simple, easy exercise to get to know your paint. And I recommend doing this whenever you buy new paints because as your collection grows, you may or may not remember the properties of each of your paints. It's nice to have a reference on hand whenever you need it. <music>